Good morning, Modern Steaders. Man, doesn't that post and beam garage look nice down there? Oh, we, gotta go we gotta go check in on the meat birds this morning and see how they're doing. And then we'll get over there. We had some issues with our meat birds the other night. Man, that looks so nice. If you guys didn't watch our last video, we had a predator come in and get one of our meat birds. That was kind of my fault because it escaped out, but it left a wing behind. So I took the wing and I set it out by our game camera and I had the game camera set out last night and I didn't find any footage on the game camera. So we need to go out this morning and check to see if that wing is still out there and to see how the meat birds did last night. Good morning guys. The meat birds are looking good. I'm not seeing any loose. We had a couple of meat birds get loose the night before and that's how one of them got gutted. Not seeing the wing. Bummer. So I had set the wing out right in this area. Now I'm not seeing any feathers or anything over here. And I had the game camera set out over here and it's getting this whole area. But whatever came in last night didn't set off the game camera. I'm gonna reset the game camera. I'm gonna spin the angle a little bit. Maybe I'll lower it a little bit too. We'll go a little bit more this way and down. Let's try that. That should be good. I'm not gonna put any bait out. The only reason why I put the wing out is because I knew no matter what, that predator was gonna come back and look for that wing last night. But maybe it'll come back and see if it has anything else here. I don't know, but. The meat birds are all looking good. I'm not seeing where anything tried digging under their tractors. So I think we're in good shape with them. Well, I'm glad no critter got our meat birds last night, but I'm disappointed that we didn't catch it on game camera seeing what was coming in and that ate the meat bird the night before. And I can't say I blame the critter for eating the meat bird. They are pretty tasty animals. You know, we really do enjoy eating them. Come on, Pluto. We got a few more chores we got to get done, and then we can start working on our post and beam garage that we're building. Man, it's looking so good. Morning. Morning. Figaro. I was looking for my vest this morning and I couldn't find it. Good morning, Buttercup. You ate all that grain, you piggy. Let me get your eye booger. There you go. And you're gonna go have another breakfast, aren't you? You girls look like you're starting to get your winter coats on. You're looking pretty fluffy there, Ivy and Nora. Getting ready for the cold weather. Come on, a little treat before we get to the feeder. All right, quick, quick, quick. Let's go. Yep, the girls are starting to get their winter coats. That means fall is coming. There you go. There's Buttercup coming for her second breakfast. Before we can stop putting the beams up on our 20 by 36 post and beam garage we bought from JamaicaCottageShops.com. I'll have links in the video description down below to their website. I want to thank Jamaica Cottage Shops for sponsoring today's video. We got to set up and we got to build staging before we can stop building. I want to thank my friend for letting us borrow his staging. This is going to be a huge time saver having this. Now the sun's coming out. 
It's going to be a nice one today. Gotta hide that white belly. I don't want to blind anybody's eyes. We've got some casters. So that'll be nice. We can roll it all around. I'm curious to see how high we're going to need to go today. I don't know if we're going to need to go one or two stages high. I'm thinking two to get these beams set up, but time will tell. We don't need the wheels falling off on us. There's the hole. That's going to be the perfect height right here. I don't want to go any higher with our staging for now. Once we are higher, to get inside, we're going to have to take off the second stage anyways. So we're going to leave it just this way, and then we can get all of our outside beams up, roll it in, do all of our inside beams. Yeah, that makes me happy. We only need to set one row of staging up for now. You're gonna notice when we're up there that the top two beams are not the same height. And that's not because it's not the same length. It's because the pressure treated boards right here, pressure treated is one of those notorious things. Nothing is ever the same thickness. And I don't know why, I don't know if it's when they put it in the solution to pressure treat it, if some boards swell more than others. But if you look right here, this board, this six by six is thicker than this six by six. And it's not to do with these notches it's to do with this six by six is wider than this one so if I wanted to fix it I would have either had to notch it down here or rip the whole board and that would have just been a pain because over here these six by sixes are the same on both sides so what I'm choosing to do is I'm gonna fix it when we're up high on our top beams and I'll put a little bit underneath this six by six to fill that space so when you're working with pressure treated, especially if you're doing floor joists, it's a pain because some of them might be 12 inches thick, some might be 12 and a quarter, some might be 12 and an eighth, some might be 12 and three eighths. When I used to work on, when I would work on jobs, it was a pain, we'd have to rip them down. And so when you're working with pressure treated, just remember they're not always the same thickness. If you know why pressure treated varies in thickness and widths, leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to know the reason. I'm, I don't know, but I just know they do always vary so just one thing to keep an eye out for when you're working but we need to get six of our 14 4 400s two four six so you know what i'm gonna drive the truck over there and we're gonna slide them in the back of the truck Thank you. 
bite is easy. The first one's always the doozy because you're figuring out the best way to do it all. And that's where we're at right now. And I always forget how much heavier rough sawn lumber is versus kiln dried. Stuff you buy at the store, a two by 12 is only inch and a half thick, not two inches thick, and it's only 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half wide. So you lose quite a bit of weight there too. All right, can, how far are you on your edge? I'm not halfway. You're not halfway. Everything is plumb. This way we're plumb. I'm just gonna make sure this one's plumb this way. So this one. That top gotta get pushed over to you some. So this post was not plumb. We gotta go a little bit more. If you wanna hold that. Is that good? Awesome. So that's gonna help gain us what we needed too up here. Actually, I just gotta tap it your way a little bit so that's even part better. Awesome. Alright, so I gotta go to Gina a smidge. I like that right there. Now that's pretty good considering we leveled string this and we're only down. I'll we'll have to raise your end up like a quarter of an I'm inch. I'll put a spacer under it. I got shims. So I'm gonna nail my end. And then I'll shim your end. All right, that'll be good for now. All right. So we gotta come up a smidge. Right on the money, I like it. All right, I cut a fill a strip. Let's get this up where it needs to be. Bam. We are dead level there. I like it. I knew building it the way we did that the center piers are probably gonna be down a little bit, but we used a rope string and we didn't use a laser, so to be off, that's five eighths of an inch. I'm happy with that. 
I don't think that's bad at all. I'd rather shim it this way and do it this way versus down below or leaving a sag in the center because then you'd see a sag in the roof. And we're gonna have siding over all of this. So this shim you won't see later on. All right, I'm gonna see how plumb these two posts are. So this top is gonna get kicked over a quarter of an inch that way. All right, I don't wanna undo those other ratchet straps quite yet. So we don't need to go this rugged, but that's what I have that's that long. Not far at all. That's good right there. All right, the first one's down. It's always the worst. Now we'll go for the next one. I like that right there. Perfect. Leave four in there for now, and then I'll go over there, get that leveled off, and then we can put the next ones on. All right, so let's see how we are here. I need to come up, looks like about the same. Right on the money, I like it. Let's see if I can get it all the way across. Gonna break. Oh, nice. So 144 is here, and that was telling me that post needed to go that way, so that's about right. That post has gotta go out to get plumb. So we'll set this end in first, get this tight, nail it here, and then we'll get that end where it needs to be plumb it, then we'll nail that end. What's that? And then it'll hold it, yep. It was nice having a place to rest the board on the other one. So I'm gonna stick this there just so we can set our top plank up here for a minute. It's the neighbor brush hogging. Yeah, that's nice having that right there. Oh, so close. No. Nope. 
Nice. Now this post has got to come out and you can see it. So we got to push it out and then nail it at the same time. Go for it. I just need to trim this back a little bit. And that'll be perfect. Now we can go to the back side, but before we move, I'm gonna trim this a smidge. Gina said I should have made this board longer and I could have just left it up. She was right. I weren't thinking. This thing from the ground up out of nothing. No flight plan, no manual to be found. You and I, we're driving in the dark without headlights. Trying to find our way. It's hard telling where we'll be the coming days. I'll be there with you It's hard to tell you where we'll be in the coming days I'll be there with you I'll be here with you Built a wall around my heart to stop the bleeding more to make of all the words that I should have said to you and we're walking through the fire and the smoke clouds trying to find our way it's hard to tell you where we'll be the coming days Oh, that stiffened everything up. That's good. I'm gonna leave the straps on for now. We probably don't need them, but I'm gonna leave them up until we get some more stuff built on. Just to make sure everything stays nice and square. Now I can go back and nail these front ones better. I ain't going nowhere. Those are all nailed. Check that outer edge. I think that was good though. I think we just gotta go back to that side now. Yeah, those are all nailed, nailed, nailed. I just go back to that first one we did and get some nails in on it. Looking good. That puts it into perspective of how tall the doorways will be.
Gina says she needs an onion. Whoa, you might be zoomed in on my face. Woo! There you go. Gina says she needs an onion tonight for dinner. We have some down in the barn curing, but instead of taking the ones that were out that are already curing, let's go in the greenhouse. This is our produce aisle. Let's go in the produce aisle and get her an onion. She said she didn't want a Mondo like that one. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit bigger one than that. It was not too bad. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's kind of big in. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm thinking. How about this one? Because it's fallen over. It's kind of big, but it's fallen over. And that means it's ready to come out. And that is the soil block right there that we started it in. Perfect. That's a beautiful baseball sized onion. I like it. Got you a baseball sized one. I'm going to make squash soup for supper tonight. But before I do that, I want to get these biscuits in the oven. This is not a normal biscuit recipe I've used, so if I like it, I will do it again probably in the near future because we're going to be having lots of soups and stews. So I'll share that with you. Gonna be making some squash soup tonight to use up the remainder of squash that we had the other night. But before I do that, I gotta get these gluten-free biscuits in the oven. Um, we are not gluten-free, but we try to do some things gluten-free and I want to get more and more into gluten-free. So I'm going to try these out and if they turn out good, we'll probably do more of them in the future. And, and then I will share the recipe with you if they come out. So never made squash soup before. We were talking to a friend the other night and talking about how I had made squash, but I really dried it out because I put it in the Instant Pot and it's supposed to go in for four minutes and then release the pressure and take it out. Well, once it had gone off, I had been distracted by something else and then it slow release for another 10 minutes and then it probably once we took it out and it didn't get to take care of it right away, it had dried it out. So she says, why don't you make squash soup? And I'm like, oh, so I'm gonna try squash soup tonight. Hopefully it's something that we all enjoy. We also have some homemade chicken broth in the fridge. So we have everything on hand. So I'm gonna give that a try. I don't know about what is about these onions, but they are so much stronger than the ones we've gotten from the store. And I'm sure that's a great thing, but not for my eyes. Add my chicken broth to it. Okay, it's starting to boil. So I'm just going to turn it down to a simmer. When I do this again next time, if we like it, I will not put so much chicken broth because it's very, gonna be very brothy. I just wanna taste it and see what I need to add for sweetness. I think just a little bit of maple syrup. I'm gonna put a splash of maple syrup in this.
tell you what, it feels good having those big beams up. Those are the biggest ones, but not the highest ones. We have some other ones we need to put up still that are going to go up on the peak. And they're not quite as big, but they're still as big. So once we have all the big heavy beams up, it'll be really refreshing. But we are getting there, starting to come together now and having those top beams up and the front post up really starts to put it into perspective that's not the highest point of the building either it's going to be a peak we're building this one like we did our firewood shed so if you guys haven't seen that playlist i'll put a link to that playlist right here and you can kind of see what we're going to be building it like it's just the firewood shed but on steroids is what i keep saying the squash soup was pretty good for us we need something a little bit more meatier for dinner but Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, now's a great time to hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and hit the like button. All of those things really helps us out with the whole Google, YouTube algorithm, and it helps us out and letting us know that you guys really like the videos and gives us a little bit more motivation. So thanks for coming along, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.